Hello there everyone, UXW Bill here with you once again. I've got just a quick little video during which I hope to touch on some points, but the primary subject of this video will be, to the delight of many I'm sure, another computer project that I'm actually working on right now. I'm in the midst of working on it and I'm not totally sure in which direction I want to take it, but more on that in just a moment. First of all, I'd like to apologize to anyone who was upset or offended by my commentary on the previous video about various and sundry things from the Bureau of Video Productions here on the UXW Bill channel. I was not trying to come across as though I was scolding anyone in particular. That was certainly not my intention. Rather, I was simply blowing off a little bit of steam because I'm a big believer that bottling those kind of things up isn't very healthy, and I just so happened to choose YouTube as an outlet. Perhaps not the best decision, but if that's the worst decision I've ever made in my life, and I will assure you it most definitely is not, well, then uh, <laughs> things really aren't so terribly bad. Emptying the Roach Palace continues apace. The man cave is completely empty, save for the air conditioning controller and the air conditioner itself at this point. I've been shopping around for uh, other demolition contractors, particularly some that would be willing to save materials from that house and distribute them for reuse in other dwellings, buildings, what have you, that could benefit from the use of vintage building materials. Because even though that house is kind of a wreck and it's you know, really more than I can deal with. There are certainly some things inside it, particularly floorboards and some of the wallboards and stuff like that that are worth saving, and I'd like to see those things live on. This particular computer system, a Dell Dimension XPS-T series, a T450 if you really want to know, Pentium 3, was something that I rescued during the process, this most recent round of removing stuff from the Roach Palace. I've already put more money into it than it's worth because the power supply was dead and so was the clock battery. It had a nice DVD burner in it from Sony. Maybe it's even the one I ended up putting in the Dimension 8300 that's sitting down here. This computer was absolutely filthy. It ended up in the dishwasher, and I took the burner out for a more deserving project somewhere else, because it wouldn't have much of a future in what I'm doing with this system right now. But as it seems that a replacement drive blank would either be very difficult to find or probably worth its weight in gold or some similarly ridiculous situation such as that, well, I've decided that this folded up piece of paper can work as an acceptable substitute for the time being. It looks dorky, but it looks less dorky than a bare drive bay would happen to look. This video will also be discussing something I'm playing with here. Someone gave me this APC Backups 300. I have a whole bunch of these. This is one of the variants that has a computer communications port on it. And so what we will be playing with here in just a moment, as you can see I have it on the screen right now, a uh, status output from the APC UPSD program. This is a UPS that supports only dumb or simple signaling communications. It can tell the computer when the AC line is okay, it can tell the computer when it's on battery, and it can tell the computer when the battery is about to run out. And that is all the information that it can exchange. But APC UPSD is still quite capable of communicating with these simpler models. And as most of the uninterruptible power supplies I have are significantly more intelligent than this one, this will be my first time trying this out. It'll be interesting to see what happens, and I'm going to be sharing it with you here on YouTube for, I'm certain, your viewing pleasure. But the real reason for this computer's existence has to do with my desire, at least my seeming desire, to create what's known as a syslog server. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the concept of syslog, it's pretty simple. There are devices that exist on a network, as many of you know, and some of them are capable of logging information and errors into their own limited memory. But if you're not quick enough to get that information or you want to keep it for long-term perusal, you can't do so unless you have a place for all those errors and messages to go. And that place would be a syslog server. Now, what I have set up here is a system running the uh, latest stable release of Debian Linux. I believe that is the Jesse revision. In case you're wondering about the name, it's named after the cowgirl in the Toy Story movies, and that's about all I know about that. What I have going on here, I have installed, after some diddling around with various and sundry other products, I have installed the R Syslog software, and I have gotten it to the point where I will demonstrate that it is actually possible for the system to receive a syslog message. Ah, but look at that. The management card in the UPS over in the Fortress of Amplitude timed out. I know, I shouldn't leave that at the, uh, at the default setting, but guess what I did? 
we will try to send an emergency syslog message that should go to this machine, unless of course it's gotten another IP address. I know I should probably nail that down better than I have, or the R syslog software itself isn't running. But we'll see. Doesn't look like it's actually working, so... <laughs> Back to the drawing board on that, I guess. I guess the, this system has gotten a different dynamically assigned IP address. So let me straighten that out and I'll be right back. Alright, I have returned and indeed that was the problem. While not the canonical definition of an off by one error, such was the case. The DHCP lease that this machine had received gave it an IP address one less than the one it had previously. So I guess another machine jumped in in the time that has passed since this one was sitting idle, and, well, that's what I get for not nailing it down to a static IP. I'll tell you what, folks, I almost have laziness down to a kind of an art. But as I started to say, the demonstration that we're going to have here involves sending an emergency class syslog message from an APC uninterruptible power supply network management card to the syslog server. And if the software is actually running, which might be a pretty big if, we should get a message coming in from the network management card, and indeed we do. Now that wasn't too hard to get working. I had to go through the uh, rsyslog software packages configuration file and enable TCP communication to enable it to receive messages from other hosts on the network. So that's working great. But here's the part where I'm asking for your help. I have to admit that I find the documentation for rsyslog to be, well, frankly, <laughs> kind of... Uh, kind of impenetrable. I don't really understand it very well. I'll admit I haven't spent the most time on it, but it's certainly not something that I've been able to just pick up and run with. And perhaps our syslog is not in fact the software that I actually want to use for the task that I have in mind. What I would like to have happen is something along the lines of different syslog entries coming in from different hosts at different IP addresses and all going into a log file that differs with the IP address that each host sending syslog messages has. So if I have a host here, as you can see on 192.168.1.129, I want that I want that device's syslog entries to all go into one log file. Maybe I can't do that with our syslog. Maybe syslog is the wrong tool for this job. I'm certainly open to changing software packages considering something else. But there's a catch. If you're going to suggest another software package, please explain your rationale. Yes, I know. It's that annoying question posed by teachers the world round. You have to defend your opinion. <laughs> your views on the matter have to be made plain so that I can understand where you're coming from and how I should get there. Again, you know, I do have some background. I have more than some background in network administration, but syslog is one of those things that while I've known that it exists, I've never really done anything with it. So your input would certainly be appreciated on that matter. Well, moving right along, the time has come to go ahead and do what I was going to do during this particular video, and that is see if APC UPSD will properly communicate with this uninterruptible power supply. I'll show you a little bit about how I've got this hooked up here. We'll go around to the back. Just to give you a little information here, in case you're one of those folks that's thinking about commenting and saying how much power I'm wasting using an old computer to do this, well, it's certainly not into the league of something like a Raspberry Pi board, which I actually do have, but this particular system, when it's sitting at the BIOS setup screen plugged into a kilowatt watt meter, is pulling down just about 34 watts worth of AC power. So my guess is that when it's booted into an operating system that might actually be placing the processor into suspended states of activity, it's probably drawing even less power than that. But here I have the simple communications cable coming off of the uninterruptible power supply itself. It's got a brand new battery in it from a CyberPower plug strip that died protecting its load. Not a big fan of those. And then the simple signaling cable goes down here to the machine's serial port. And at least in preliminary tests so far, it seems that the software on the computer, APC UPSD, is aware that the system is online right now. So we're going to kill power to it. And now it's running on battery. It'll be a couple of seconds before APC UPSD 
actually complains, provided of course that it's running. But there we go. And dumb UPS is not an effort at making fun of the poor thing. <laughs> it's just a statement of the facts. I'm not going to leave the camera running while this thing runs down because it held that computer for over an hour during a previous test. It did very, very well, gave an excellent account of itself. And while I'm going to run down the battery a little bit faster with this 70 watt light bulb over here, that'll still take a fair bit of time. So we'll be back just before this thing is about to reach its finale and power down the computer successfully. Hopefully successfully. See, I'm an optimist. An incurable optimist. All right, there's the low battery bell, folks. System should halt. But I'm not sure that it made it in time. APC UPSD definitely shut down the system. And then it should have strobed the UPS to turn off via the pins on the serial interface that are devoted to that function. But let's just go ahead and see what happens here. See if the system claims that it came up cleanly or otherwise. If it forces a file system check, we'll know it didn't quite make it. There are switches on the back of the UPS that define when it's supposed to actually signal low battery. And I don't know how they're set at the moment. We'll see what happens here just as soon as this thing happens to boot up. It's thinking about it. I don't know why, but sometimes this system takes a very long time to get through its power on self-test. Hope it didn't trash the system. <laughs> that just wouldn't be any fun. Nope, there we go. I just have to remember this is a Pentium 3 at 450 megahertz. And while it can still run a contemporary Linux kernel and distribution, it's not going to be lightning quick in doing so. Well, I think maybe it did make, it sh make itself shut down properly. Because the system claims that the file system is clean. So I guess we can call that a uh, roaring success, or at least a beeping success when the battery cuts out on that thing. It worked better than I expected it to. I really did not expect that it would work properly. So thank you for watching. Again, I would appreciate any useful information you might be able to offer on the concept of configuring syslog to take different messages from other nodes on the network and segregate them by node into different log files. If you have something on that, I would certainly appreciate hearing it. Meanwhile, thank you very much for watching. Feel free to leave a comment if you have one. And now you can't say that I've only uploaded one video this year. <laughs>